In this week's episode, I'm going to show you some easy slicer settings you can use to decrease the print time without losing any quality. Hey guys, David here and welcome to Make a Software. The weekly series in addition to my project videos where I show you one really cool feature or software that will greatly help you in your DIY projects. Now many times you will want uh, great quality prints, but that takes a long time. Uh, but there are some settings that you can actually change that will result in basically the same quality but at a lot faster speed. Now which settings of these are the most effective will highly depend on your model, uh, so uh, you're gonna have to play around a bit. But I'll uh, just go through and show you the most uh, frequently used ones uh, that I use all the time to speed up my prints. As an example print I have uh, this uh, grip here, it's part of a uh, Skyrim bow and it's just half, it doesn't really matter, that's just the first example print that I found. And uh, the basic settings that I'm using are fairly uh, simple, uh, it's a 0.15mm layer height and uh, fairly uh, average speeds for uh, most uh, kind of uh, budget 3D printers. While I'm doing this inside of Prusa Slicer, uh, the same of course applies if you're using Cura or any other uh, slicer software as well. These settings are pretty much universal. Now before we do any changes, uh, let's have a quick look at the print preview. And as you can see, uh, this uh, looks very detailed and uh, quite nice and smooth, uh, with the only issue maybe being like the very top where it gets quite shallow. And we, if we have a look inside, uh, this is printed very solid uh, with some gyroid info. And the total print time for this model is uh, just about uh, 3 hours and 20 minutes. So let's see if we can uh, decrease this a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is actually decrease uh, the infill a bit. Uh, you saw it as quite, quite dense infill and uh, unless you're uh, printing mechanical models, it really is not uh, necessary to have that much infill. This is going to be main, mainly a prop, so uh, you can easily drop down the infill to like 20, 15 or even 10% depending on how sturdy you want it. But just dropping it down from 25 to 15%, we can see that we have almost an hour reduction in this print time. And looking at the preview, this still looks like uh, plenty of info uh, to support this print. But let's, let's head over uh, into the settings here. Uh, as you can see, the layer height is set, and I'm not going to change uh, this layer height for now. Uh, we do want to really keep that nice crisp quality. Nowadays, slices offer a great variety of different info, and uh, for the most part, uh, this is uh, just your preference. But I find that on many printers, especially uh, cheaper ones where the accelerations aren't as fast, it makes sense uh, to go with straight info, something like rectilinear or maybe cubic if you want a 3D info. The gyroid info looks really cool, and on fast printers, it's also great, but it requires the printer to move back and forth a lot. So moving to rectilinear can actually increase your print time. You can see uh, it went from two and a half hours to two hours and 20 minutes, uh, which is 10 minute uh, decrease in print time with the same info density. Another thing we can do when printing with very thin layers is to combine the infill. There's no need for the infill to be only 0.15 millimeters high. Uh, you don't see it. So we can easily just print the infill every other layer and have it uh, be 0.3 millimeters high while printing uh, the outside every layer. So we can say we want to combine the infill every two layers. And as you can see, that shaved another like 15 minutes of our print time and will not be seen on the outside. Now with this setting, you have to be careful that uh, you don't want to push this too far. With a 0.4 millimeter knob, you don't really want to have a layer height over 0.3 millimeters. Uh, you want to generally stay uh, below about 80% of your nozzle diameter with your uh, print height. So if you were doing uh, 0.2 millimeter or 0.25 millimeter layer height, you don't really uh, want to use the setting. But if you're going to 0.15 or 0.1 millimeter layer height, this is definitely a big time saver that will not decrease the quality. Now let's head to the obvious tab, the print speed. And as you can see, uh, running here at 60 millimeters a minute, basically base speed, with the external parameters at 30 millimeters a minute. Now, depending on your print profile, uh, this settings might already be tuned slightly uh, towards uh, speed. But basically what you want to keep in mind is uh, which parts are going to be seen and those you want to print slower. For example, the external perimeters are very important. Those are the lines that you will actually see most of the time. So you want to print those fairly slow. However, for example, the infill, there's no need to print this super slow. Uh, on my machines, I uh, push this quite far, uh, but just as a kind of starting baseline, let's maybe push this to 120. This will greatly increase our uh, print speed, but not really be seen since it's just the infill. Solid infill you can also increase uh, a little bit, but not quite as much, maybe. Let, maybe let's put this to 100. 
Top solid info once again is seen, so uh, depending on your machine, you don't want to uh, push that too far. We can also uh, go ahead and push the perimeters inside, but uh, with just two perimeters, if the inside perimeter is too uh, inaccurate, it will also be seen in the outside perimeter. So let's see what kind of increase in speed we got from just changing those info. As you can see, we shaved another 10 minutes of our print time, which is just great. There is one more thing though that we can uh, change. And I've already shown this in a previous video, and that is to use adaptive layers. On this model here, we mainly need shallow layers here where the print is shallow. Whereas where the walls are super uh, top, uh, steep, it doesn't really need to be uh, 0.15 millimeters. Even 0.2 millimeters will give us basically the same uh, quality. So what we can do is go into layers and perimeters, bump that up to back up to 0.2 millimeters. And that gave us uh, another print increase, but now we do want to uh, keep some quality. So we're going to go into the variable layer height, and here on the top, we're going to increase our layers. Maybe smooth it a bit, and here you go. Looking closely here now, we can see that uh, the layer lines are relatively consistent all the way through, uh, even though it gets a lot shallower here, and that's uh, because we start uh, making smaller and smaller layer changes. Now you can see that the print time actually went up, uh, but if we look at the print preview, it also looks even uh, nicer and smoother than it did originally. And one last uh, quick tip that is not uh, going to increase your speed, but help you figure out what to improve is instead of push your slicer up here, you actually see how much time is spent on which features. So uh, depending on your model, this is going to be very different. And you can see like which feature type uh, is the most time spent, and then you can focus on optimizing that as uh, for example, if I uh, go ahead and uh, optimize my top solid infill, uh, this is only two minutes spent, like 1.8% of the print time. This is not going to really uh, give me a big print increase. But solid infill here is one and a half, is like half the print time. So by increasing the solid infill speed, I'm going to increase my print speed dramatically. That's it from my side. If you guys have any other settings that you can recommend uh, to speed up your print without uh, losing any quality, leave them down in the comments. Uh, I'm sure uh, there are more that I haven't shown here. If you like this video, make sure to go check out the other Makersoft videos, where I cover a lot more about Proton Slice, the Fusion 360, and other programs. With that said, thanks for watching, and until next week.